street to go to a local mart, grocery mart. The young boy follows behind. This is according to the 16-year-old. Then the 16-year-old turns around and tells the little boy, go back home. Kind of shoes him away and sends him back home. And then that's the last, according to the brother, that the little boy has ever seen. Between sometime 7.30 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. Saturday night. More than a thousand people were volunteering to go out and just search. With the helicopter. Well, today we find out early this morning that uh, police and Riverside County Sheriff's Department search <laughs> warrant at that home, at the home where the boy lived, or lives, because we still don't know the ID. And in doing so, they apparently received some sort of a tip. They won't tell us where that tip came from. And that tip led them some 75 to 85 feet away from the house into a shallow grave where they discovered a body, a partially well, covered they body. Find that so that was the result of a tip. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So no. that you know they, they, that's when exactly everything just changed, came to a grinding halt, and that happened around one, I think one one thirty this morning when the search warrants were issued, were served. So that's when the dig began, the excavation of that particular area. And they started during the overnight hours. Oh, absolutely. They cordoned off the area, put tents up, had bright lights in there, and started digging. Because that, that, there's a couple reasons for that. They want to get on it ASAP. Obviously, this was a, apparently they thought it was a credible tip, because they were receiving a lot of tips prior to that. And they just kept hitting dead ends with those tips. And they were getting all kinds of tips about sightings and possible sightings. That's where it always was. And, and, but they followed up on every one of them. For some reason, though, this one seemed more credible, and they reacted immediately. And when they did, and they got the search warrant, they went out and did the search and found that, indeed, there was a partially exposed body, shut it down. Another thing, too, if they want to get on it as quickly as possible before the media get there. So this all taking place, we were told there was a press conference today at 2 in Menifee. Well, it was moved to 4, and it included the, uh, the acting, well, you shouldn't say acting, but he's the, kind of the police chief of Menifee slash captain of the Riverside County Sheriff's Department who's in charge of that unincorporated police department there, and the mayor. And it was weird because the captain started out by saying, I hate to start with bad news kind of thing, and said that uh, a body matching the description of 11-year-old um, Terry Dwayne Smith Jr. was found in a shallow grave, matching the description of it. Never identified it. And in the course of the investigation and interviews with the family, they said as a result of those interviews, the game they put here. a relative into custody and charged him with murder. That's all they were saying. So that was the day they at the same press conference. All, yeah, and I mean, it was a very short press conference. And then the mayor came up and spoke, and then he was talking more about how the community came together, thanks for the love and support, and then started quoting scripture. Right. Well, he was saying mayor stuff, and then he kind of slipped into scripture stuff. Was, okay. Yeah, it was really odd. Uh, so... Uh, and then they went, and they took, answered like two questions, the captain did, and then when we tried to bring him back up to answer more questions, he just kind of put his hand up and walked away. It has to be a tough moment when you uncover this 11-year-old's body, and then you link the 16 year old to the but, but that's what i want to ask you about something well they put the they put the 16 year old and the 11 year old together based on what you first said which is that the 16 year old was watching the 11 year old mm -hmm. 